Hello friend and once again welcome to PHPSolutions.com. My name is Amit and today I'm going to show you a couple of simple examples for REST API. How to use REST API in planning, budgeting, cloud service and high-end planning. We'll use both on-prem and on-cloud. As this is the first session, therefore I'm going through very basic example. Please uh, skip to this session if you are already know basis about REST API and how to use them under hyphen planning and PBCS. In a subsequent example, I show you more advanced cases of customizing application, adding metadata through REST API. So let's get started. So first thing first, uh, REST API, uh, the abbreviation of called representational state transfer is basically a way of accessing the web services. So you have two methods, either you can use REST or you can use SOAP API. REST API is a more widely used method. REST is an architectural style that does not require any processing. It is more simple and flexible. So you can use REST API to fetch information or post or give some information through your web service. As I've taken a snapshot over here, you can see you can use cloud-based service, cloud web application, mobile application, and so on. In our case, we are using cloud-based application. So REST API, the snapshot of the architecture, you can see the, 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 the REST client can, could be your browser, could be your Android app, or could be iPhone, and you can use any one of the method, and the message would be transferred through JSON or XML, delete, put, get, post. However, in today's example, I would only be using get option. The request will travel through HTTPS and in our case we have a cloud application PBCS or it could be on-prem. So a couple of simple example I've chosen. Let's get started. In the first example you can execute these examples directly either through your browser or you can use REST API client. So there are plenty of REST API clients are available. You can just go and browse it. So the first example would simply retrieve whether your application instance support REST or not. So I show you. So the URL, hybrid planning and REST. It'll, the way the information is shown is property colon value. So if you go through preview, post execution of this, does it support REST? Yes, it does. Property colon value. So the first version is deprecated. So I'm going to skip this. Second version is also deprecated. So third version is active version. Life cycle is active. Is latest Boolean property true? And version is V3. And this is the URL of your entire application. So you can see success or procedure version as well. The same could have run from browser as well. You could copy and paste through browser. I'm using Firefox and Firefox has a pretty nice presentation of REST API outcome. So the one I shown you for, this is for cloud application. I have an on-prem application as well. And the same command work for on, it works for on-prem as well. You see the, the syntax remains same, the URL change. Rather than I use cloud instance, I use on-prem IPM planning server name, port name, IPM planning in REST. So my on-prem and on-cloud both support the REST API. Right, both support. So you see for on-cloud, V3 was latest version. For on-prem, V3 is latest version and it works on this 11.1.2.4. The predecessor version was 11.1.2.3.6.0.0. Right. So now next step, once you know the version of it, you can retrieve specific version detail. For example, in our case, we retrieve version 11.1.2.4 for on-prem. This is your 11.1.2.4. You can go to home and uh, application about EPM 11.1.2.4. And this is your detail. This also support on PBCS on cloud. So after rest, just append version. So as I said, version three was active version and one and two were deprecated. 
you see version 3 is active version it is active property set to true so these are two fairly straightforward and simple command the next example you can see the list of applications running under your on-prem on cloud so you apply rest api version and the you append one more argument called applications and hence you can see all the list of active applications so in on ram on cloud i have only one application running epbc and the, these are the underlying detail application type is hyphen planning and it is a multi-dimensional application at a storage this works same for on prem as well and in a subsequent example i show you how you can wrap these rest functions uh, how you can use the rest function within groovy so you see uh, it requires an authentication and therefore i need to change the authentication over here so i'll pass username and password the one i given previously did not work so you can pass an authentication through basic authentication so these are list of applications exist in my on-prem application on-prem server list of application exist so up to here it was fairly straightforward you can also get the list of specific job or all job for example in on-prem i like to see the list of last executed job so the job detail you can see under job console and uh, probably i close and open again on prem and on cloud also you can see job i go to tools job console these are two jobs so job number 1016 the status of the job is completed and the job detail the same information you can retrieve through rest so this is an argument application application name jobs and job id jobs and job id and this way you can retrieve a specific job detail exactly what you see in your server and you have a job details the job status is completed and the job type status and the rest of the detail of the job this command is also available for your on cloud as well pbcs when you're using pbcs application you can see the list of all the jobs under your application jobs to go to your application and there you can see jobs and you select the job uh, and for example i select refresh database this is my job and this is a job id okay so you need to pass this as an argument job and job id i'm using job id 51 and then let's see the outcome of it this is job detail okay credential the job does not exist the job does not exist okay so i need to use a different job id you can pick up the job id from there and define over here as well this is fairly straightforward in addition to this you can see all job detail so there's an option called job definitions instead of specifying job you can use an application name or oblique job definitions okay uh, i would change an authentication once again i just change an authentication over here Oh, I copied it the wrong one. Let me close it. And job definitions. Right there, I can see all the job and underline IDs. Okay, the cube refresh. This is the job, uh, job name, job type, and so on. Pretty much this function support for on prem and on cloud exactly same way you define job definition 
so right now we had only two jobs as i shown you over here we got two jobs active jobs recently completed okay once again i change authentication over here so refresh queue the job okay the next job is allocate plant uh, targets and so on the couple of next example are very interesting and uh, in case you want to filter job rather than looking all the job you can filter job as well for example you can pass job definitions and additional argument oblique queue and under curly braces you define job type and rule this way you are limiting your outcome and you say you wanted to see only those jobs of rule type they execute it now you have only those job of rule type right do you see the all their rule types job types as rule and i've taken a snapshot of this for on prem this to support on prem and on cloud both okay so the next example you can extract form definitions and this form definition so i have a form over here called head count and salary planning you can see the form call head count and salary planning this job definition or details or the layout i can extract through rest it is taking a little time in retrieving you can extract this so application application name data export and name of your data form select this and pass it over here as an argument so you see we have data export and name of your data form send and there you can see data form detail so point of view column rows because we have a nesting of rows therefore you see an option and any underline of attributes so this way you can retrieve data form details as well specific data form layout there's an extension to this you can also retrieve a specific dimension member detail get to retrieve dimension member name or you can post it you can add uh, new member on the fly using rest so the example i have chosen over here you see uh, we have application application name dimension dimension member name application application name dimension dimension name account and i am retrieving a dimension member name for ofs texas this is my account dimension i retrieve it and i show you over here we have a member call so any any dimension must start with OFS. This system defined. You can pretty much go to classic application dimension, and there you can search for a member OFS Texas, and all the detail you find over here. I use name and alias both. Okay, so it seems this is Texas. So I had a extra space so what detail you retrieve over here the same you can find uh, over here so OFS Texas is data storage property store data account type username and other details to pass calculation description data type property the exact property of a dimension member name can also be retrieved through rest so you can access dimension, dimension members, and data form definition. The last example is even more interesting. You can download application snapshot. So during application migration, when you take an application backup, you define a snapshot. This you can find out a migration. But uh, if you use this expression with REST API client, it retrieves binary. These are my snapshots. You can pick any one of the snapshot and uh, you can pass it over here as an argument so i'll take this
and if you run it through client it will say it returns a binary outcome so recommended to run it it says it is returning binary response so run it through your browser when you run it through browser it asks you to a prompt you to download content you can prompt download content and this is your pretty much same as you do with lcm extract lcm right click and open through so this is your backup so these couple of few example will definitely help you out understanding how rest api work in a subsequent session i show you more advanced cases how to use a rest uh, within your java or in your groovy so that's it for today should you have more question please write to us support.bispecialutions.com thank you